Hi, I'm Caleb Kingston, and I'm going to show you how you can create and publish your portfolio using Studio. Studio is a web design platform for all creatives. So if you're a photographer, graphic or interior designer, videographer, or any type of creative wanting a canvas to showcase your work, Studio is a great place to start, especially if you don't want to rely on costly help from web designers or developers. We're going to create this portfolio in less than an hour using Studio, and you will have complete control over responsive design, graphic animations, and more to help your work look its best no matter what screen it's being viewed on. This video is going to be broken into three parts. In this video, I will showcase the portfolio where we're going to be designing, as well as other portfolio templates you can use to get started even faster, and we'll also cover the basics of how to use Studio. In part two, we're going to design three pages, and in the third and final section, we will cover how to link these pages together, add animation to elements, adapt our designs for multiple screen sizes, as well as adding SEO settings and publishing our site. So before we jump into our portfolio in Studio and show you the interface, I wanna just show you what's possible using some of the templates inside Studio. So in this case, here's a portfolio created by Patrick LeVar. So I can hit the refresh button right here just to show you all the animations and everything happening here. And again, all of this is created with no code. So it just really helps your portfolio shine. If we scroll down here, we can see other sections here for movies and music, things like that. And we also have this navigation. You notice that there's animations even on hover for the navigation. So because this is a one page portfolio, I can click on music and scroll right to the music section or scroll to the video section or thumbnail. So very nice the way that you can create those animations where they trigger as soon as you reach that position on the page. So we're going to take a look at another template we can use. This is Portfolio Minimal. So if we scroll down here, we can see our About, our Works, uh, the different sections on this scrollable landing page. And again, if I click on Works, it'll scroll right to that section and down below. So you can get started with Studio with these templates having a blog integrated and a CMS solution. We can have the contact forms and things like that, developing all of this without any code. But in this tutorial, we're going to start from scratch so you know all of the settings and the interface that you can work with to build your portfolio the way that you want. So this is the portfolio we're going to be creating here. So I'm going to hit the refresh button just to show you some of the subtle slide up animations of the images. And if I hover over these images, we're going to also enable some zooming effects in the third and final part of the tutorial. And we can see here that we're displaying our works. Uh, we have a little get in touch link right here. And we have three pages in this portfolio we're going to be creating. The first page is works, then about. And in the about section, we can have an image of ourselves and the text here. And then we're going to have a contact page. And this is where I'll show you how you can create a form on your page. So with that out of the way, let's jump into Studio where we can begin our design. So you want to go to studio.design to get started. And from right here, we can click start for free. This is where you can get started with your Google account or Facebook account. So I'll go ahead and sign up here and I'll meet you inside. So this is Studio and from right here, we can get started with our project. So if we click create new project here, You'll notice that we have, again, a lot of templates that we can work with. So if you want to create a basic business website, a basic portfolio, we can get started with all of these pre-built web pages. There's also some professional ones that have CMS built in. But for our purposes here, we're going to get started with a blank site. So we'll go ahead and click select on the blank site. Here, we're going to give this project a name. So I'm going to name this Caleb Kingston's Portfolio. We'll go ahead and click Create here. All right, so we're in the Studio interface, and I want to just walk you through some of the features you can take advantage of here. So we have a blank page, and in the top, we have this top bar here that gives us some contextual settings based on what we have selected. So in this case here, we don't have anything selected, so we have some settings for choosing the responsive view to see how our design looks in different sizes. And then we have our page settings, which I'll talk about a little bit later, how we can apply those there. In the left, we have options to name our page and also give this a page path. So in this case, we wanna just name this works. And then we can also apply the works path right here. So we'll do that here. And you'll notice that also changes here, just right above the page. 
in the very left we have a little structure of showing the different pages that we have. So in this case we have our home page and then the 404 page. And then in the left of our browser here we have the left bar where we can add boxes, images, text, and all of those items here. Now two other panels we can open up here is the pages panel and also the layers panel. So if I expand the pages panel here it'll show us the structure of our website. And then we can also toggle between the two up here and access our layers panel as we add more layers. And then right above this blank page we have options to duplicate our page or add a new page here. So let's show how we can start to add and style elements right on our page here. So with these different elements we can click and drag an element here on our page and we can pin this in different areas on the web page. We can also just click to add that directly to our web page here and we can move this around the same way. And now we also have some nodes where we can change the width for example or the height. And you'll notice that we have some new properties here now that we have this box selected. So now we have some width and height properties. So let's say this was a navigation box. We can actually apply some width here. So, we'll, so we can change this to a thousand pixels here or if we want we can change this from pixels to percentage and I'll just make this a hundred percent. Now if you want to change the height here you can do so again we'll just call this 400 pixels. We can change the border radius and we also have some styles for the fill, border, and shadow. Now if we want to drop in an image we can drag and drop here and again pin this anywhere inside of this box or below the box. So we can apply that here as well. Now if we want to apply styling between elements we can select a box for example and we have margin which is the outside spacing of an element and then we have padding which is the inside spacing. So in this case for example if I wanted the inside spacing here to be 42 pixels I can change that here and if I want to change that simultaneously between the left and right I can click on this lock icon right here and I also have some drag handles here that I can change this right on the canvas if I like. Now again to change the spacing on the outside we can select the same box here and for margin for example if I want a hundred pixel spacing between this box and this image I can change that here as well. So whatever size I change this image to be it's always going to stay a hundred pixels away from this other section. Now let's throw in just a few blocks of text here. So if we wanted to throw in text right here you can go ahead and type things. So if I wanted to type in works for example and let's drag in another one and we'll make this contact and we'll throw in one more here right in between the two and we'll name this one about and as we do this here if we select the box that contains these elements you'll notice at the left and the top we have options for aligning this content. So right now everything is contained in the center but we can pin this to the top center, bottom, or evenly distribute here. And same thing here, if we want to pin this to the left, center, right, or evenly distribute, we can do that as well. In this case we want to just keep this pinned to the left. And then changing spacing between text again is very simple. So we can click and hold down shift to select multiple elements. And in this case we have our text properties. So while we're in here we can add different fonts. I like to use a nice serif font so we're just going to scroll down here and find this Playfair display. And so we change the font here very easily and then if we want to go into our box properties we can select this box tab here and this is where I want to just set some right margin here. So we can set 30 pixels here so that there's 30 pixels spacing between each element in our navigation. Now you'll notice when we added this image here we don't really have an image applied yet so we can choose to upload images if we'd like. But we also have a great option right here if we click on this little icon to the top left of any image. This is where we can have access to many images here if we wanted to search for something specific. For example iPhone app. We can search for that and go ahead and apply this right into our design. And that's where we can make that application here. Or we can choose to upload images. And then here as far as the size we can see this box size here as we're scaling this up. So the last thing I want to cover in this section is when I do now click on the layers panel and open that up you can start to see how our structure is being created. So we have this first div 
which has three text boxes inside. And then we also have another div, which is this image here. So we can choose to click and drag to add this inside of this box here. Um, we can arrange this to pin this to the top if we'd like to pin, pin this above. We can do that here or bring this back down to be its own box, not contained in this box. Now, this should give you an idea of the layout and some of the features we're going to be using. So in this next section, we're gonna go ahead and start our design using some of these same features.